So we'll start with the quote by Danielle Hale from Realtor.com. She's the chief economist and she says that we expect sales to grow 7% and prices to rise another 5.7% on top of 2020's already high levels. While we expect mortgage rates to tick up gradually, sales and price growth will be propelled by still strong demand and a recovering economy and still low mortgage rates. High buyer demand and still lagging supply will keep prices growing, but at a slower pace than 2020 as buyers contend with mortgage rate and price increases that create affordability challenges. While younger millennial and Generation Z buyers are expected to play a growing role in the housing market, fast rising prices will create a bigger barrier to entry for the many first time buyers in these generations who don't have existing home equity to tap for a down payment savings. Although supply is expected to lag, we do expect the declines to slow and potentially stop by the end of the year as sellers grow more comfortable with the market environment and new construction picks up. Single family housing starts are expected to grow another 9% in 2021. On the whole, the market will remain seller friendly, but buyers will still have relative low mortgage rates and eventually improving selection of homes for sale. So this is some great news for buyers, basically stating that yes, there's gonna be a less inventory beginning of the year, but towards the end of the year, as sellers get more comfortable with this coronavirus economy and housing starts to pick up, meaning new construction, the, uh, starts to occur, there's going to be more options toward the end of the year. Robert Dietz, Senior Vice President and Chief Economist at the National Association of Home Builders, says that with home builder confidence near record highs, we expect continued gains for single family construction, albeit at a lower growth rate than in 2019. Some slowing of new home sales growth will occur due to the fact that a growing share of sales has come from homes that have not started construction. Nonetheless, buyer traffic will remain strong given favorable demographics, a shifting geography of housing demand to lower density markets and historically low interest rates. But supply side headwinds will persist. Residential construction continues to face limiting factors, including higher costs and longer delivery times for building materials, ongoing labor skills shortages, and concerns over regulatory cost burdens. For apartment construction, we will see some weakness for multifamily rental development, particularly in high density markets, while remodeling demand should remain strong and expand further. So he reemphasizes that we're gonna have strong housing starts, more development, but there is gonna be some lag just because of the coronavirus economy and logistical problems in transporting material but because a lot of people are willing to actually move a little bit further to get into a new home, that's the reason that there's gonna be an increase in housing starts. Todd Data, Chief Product Officer at Adam Data Solutions states that we're exiting 2020 with a number of dynamics that will more than likely keep this crazy housing market going. There is incredibly low inventory with less than $500,000, less than 500,000 homes for sale and mortgage rates at 50 year lows and there's no sign of distressed sellers from the recession coming out. These supply and demand factors will push prices even higher in the first half of the year. Inventory and pricing should ease a bit in the second half of the year and large economic headwinds could start showing up. Until then, buyers should be cautious and sellers jubilant. Basically stating that there isn't gonna be a tick or a slowdown in pricing, but it might start to show some signs of leveling off towards the end of the year in 2021. Selma Help from CoreLogic says, while 2020 did not surprise with its fair share of surprises, 2021 could have more surprises in store for us. Still, expectations for the housing market remain generally positive. First, interest rates have motivated many buyers in 2020 and are expected to remain low and help eliminate some of the affordability concerns resulting from rapid home price appreciation seen in 2020. In other words, low mortgage rates continue to provide greater purchasing power, especially for first-time home buyers. Second, first-time home buyers will remain a strong force in the market as large as the largest cohorts of millennials are turning 30, 30 <laughs> critical households formation years. But also, the oldest millennials are increasingly contributing to trade-up market. As a result, 2021 house sales activity is expected to remain strong and outpace 2020 levels. Third, inventory levels 
are likely to see some improvement improvement partially from sellers who have been on the sidelines, partially from distressed homeowners, and partially from more new construction. But the housing market will continue to struggle with an imbalance between supply and demand, which will lead to sustained competition among buyers and further home price appreciation, albeit at a slower pace than seen in 2020. Basically stating that there is still going to be some buyer, some supply and demand problems. There's going to be less supply and more demand. So that's going to continue to drive up prices, but it's not going to be at great of a pace as 2020 was. So it's going to slow down. Uh, Daryl Fairweather, chief economist of Redfin, says, although the U.S. may be able to back uh, vaccinate most of its citizens by the end of 2021, many countries will struggle to distribute vaccines. Thus, the global economic recovery could take much longer, which would make U.S. mortgage-backed securities attractive to international investors, keeping mortgage rates low. Even as the pandemic hopefully nears its end, Americans will continue to buy homes that fit their lifestyle. As a result, 2021 will see more home sales than, every, than any year since 2006. Annual sales growth will increase from 5% in 2020 to over 10% in 2021. Rising prices for existing homes will increasingly drive more buyers to consider a new one. And because home buyers are now more eager to buy in suburban and rural areas where land is cheaper than in the cities, there will be more areas where homes can be built profitably. By the end of the year, the home ownership rate will increase above 69% for the first time since 2005. So holy smokes, he's projecting a crazy year for sales volume and a crazy year for home ownership. So that's something to keep in mind. Jared, K Jared Kessler, CEO and co-founder of Easy Knock, says, as companies announce plans to allow employees to permanently work remotely, high tax cities will continue to see a talent drain as people relocate in search of cities with a large Co with, the, with the lower cost of living. Second tier cities like Austin, Charlotte, Tampa will experience a residential building boom. As COVID-19 rages on and with new restrictions likely put, into, likely put into place, the financial options for homeowners is growing scarce. 2021 will see an increase of alternative financing options for homeowners to provide additional flexibility during times of financial crisis. The federal government will create an incentive stimulus program for uh, landlords and homeowners to allow renters or owners to remain in their homes and will extend the eviction moratorium to line up with the vaccine rollout. Basically stating that the government is going to put a lot of money behind real estate and try to protect renters, right? So, for instance, in California, the eviction ban has been extended through June, where it was initially uh, dated to expire at the end of January. So we have some relief here in California. Jeff Tucker from Zillow, senior economist says, we expect to see the housing market continue to continue its bull run from the summer and autumn well into 2021. Home value appreciation will approach 9% or even 10% by July before cooling somewhat down toward 7% appreciation. This is rapid price growth and will be driven by the same factors that took steering that took the steering wheel in 2020 strong de strong demographics low mortgage rates and inadequate supply the millennial generation is moving into their mid 30s bringing a wave of demand from renters looking to buy their first home mortgage rates may inch back up to batch up, back up around 3% but even at that level they will be making purchases more attractive all along the price range and although builders are finally firing on all cylinders delivering new homes to the market, it will take them a long time to make up for the home building deficit we accumulated from 2008 to 2019. The clearest barometer we have that reflects all these dimensions of the housing market is active inventory, which is down more than one third year over year. That suggests continued fast price appreciation of ahead of fierce competition between buyers basically stating that we're going to have some strong appreciation this year we're expected to have a crazy year in real estate in regards to not just sales volume not just the construction of new uh, housing starts but also home ownership right and because from 2008 to 2019 
there wasn't that much builder confidence, right? A lot of people weren't creating new homes, but there was a lot of people that were looking to purchase homes. There was a huge deficit. So now we're working towards filling that deficit and hopefully we can create enough supply to fulfill that demand. So this is what a lot of experts are predicting 2021 to be.